<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel, and this is part of the good stuff. This is the AAS Journal Author Series, and I am super happy to have Xiaoyang Pang with us today. I'm sure I butchered that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, Xiaoyang. How are you doing today? Good. It's uh, autumn mo uh, morning for me. Mm -hmm. Slightly, the temperature is so present. 20 degrees in Shuzhou. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And it is October 5th, at least my October 5th. It's Xiaoyang's October 6th. Uh, so it is yes. my Thursday evening as we record this. And it is a beautiful night tonight. Just lovely temperatures. Um, as Phoenix is cooling down from its uh, peak heat. So very cool. Very nice. You've got some awesome pictures there behind you. What is what is that picture of with the houses and the... Uh, oh, currently I'm in my office. Mm -hmm. So yeah, despite it's a golden week in China, you know, everybody is on holiday. Cool. So I, I, I still use from time to time work at the office. So my office is in the background. Of course, first one, this is an oil painting from my uh, good friend. So who is also a uh, astronomer, Yuan Zhen, so she, she painted for me. Beautiful. And then uh, you can see there's a Chinese uh, calligraphy. So mm -hmm. which means play with astronomy. So it's a, a name I created for my uh, WeChat account. So play with astronomy, play si, suo tian wen. This means that I use drama cool. to teach astronomy for outreach. Very nice. So that's a label I invented. Yeah, it's um, we also have uh, the drama performance last year Very. for the uh, planet search. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, and the last figure I think most people notice is my office mate, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw a little Iron Man in there. <laughs> yes, Very because cool. I'm a uh, a big fan of uh, Marvel superheroes. Mm -hmm. I watch all the movies of a uh, Marvel series. So it's, uh, I just uh, put one, there's a 3D printing, you know, in my office because I yeah. think it's, uh, it encouraged me and I feel excited you know, at office. It's empowering. <laughs> you feel like yes, a hero in your office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, it's, uh, I use superhero to teach physics. That's also one thing why I put it in the office. Very good. Very cool. I like that idea. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. And Xiaoying, what do you like to do for research? I My research interest is uh, actually starting from graduate school. It's an uh, open star clusters. So I started, it's a, uh, um, for master, I started, you know, to re doing research on open cluster with a uh, catalog. At that time, it's a weather. Okay, that's yeah. really old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, I use about 900 open cluster to investigate the Milky Way property. For cool. example, the scale high, scale length, you know, and whether the north and the southern part is, uh, you know, it's a symmetric or not. So yeah. that is my master of physics. And afterward, it's, uh, I found star cluster is very interesting. But I have to say, at that time, star cluster is not as popular as nowadays. So it's um, oh. galaxy is more popular. But yeah. I I like it because it's uh, you know a group of stars fall at the same time, and you can use it as a pro, you know, to study the Milky Way, the star formation history, except and the structure. So I found you know it's a very interesting structure. So afterward, mm -hmm. I moved to Heidelberg University and study with uh, Eva Grapple to continue working on young star clusters. Cool, very nice. Yeah, and then afterward, I continue my star cluster, but now it's, um, I not only uh, working on observation, I also use simulation, embodied simulation, because I want to understand why I observe oh, yeah. the star cluster looks like this. Yeah. I want to know the underlying physics. How they got there, absolutely, very cool. And that yeah. is going to bring us to this very awesome AJ article. It is Thank open you. access, people. It is the open access era. You can go get a copy for free. Go grab one. Binary star evolution in different environments, elementary, fractal, halo, and tidal tail clusters. And Xiaoying, take us away. Thank you. 
Thank you for uh, Frank's very uh, nice introduction. And for this paper, you may wonder, you know, why we want to, you know, these different environments. So the background is that last year we uh, published uh, 85 open clusters sample in the solar neighborhood. And based on these 85 open clusters, we classify the morphology of open cluster, 3D morphology. So okay. it's um, into four times, fret, uh, filamentary, fractal, halo, and tidal tail. And okay. actually these uh, four times of uh, morphology is a sequence of different stellar density environment. Oh, so okay. it's from very low dense filamentary fractal to very dense halo. Mm -hmm. Tidal tail is in the middle. And oh. also you can see these uh, four environment is also an age sequence. Filamentary fractal is very young, mm -hmm. halo and tidal tail mm -hmm. is more mm -hmm. evolved. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. after we finish this 85 uh, cluster sample and the morphology and the 3D morphology, and then we are thinking that what we can infer from this uh, sample within the solar neighborhood. By far, we have noted that it's uh, thanks to Gaia, we know a lot more of the solar neighborhood. Yeah. Then, um, inspired by a work with uh, a PhD student in 2021, uh, Shuchi is, uh, you know, together, together work with him. In 2021, we're using those embody simulation to right. investigate the, uh, binary evolution in a Murian particle simulation. And then what we find that is that actually, even though we uniformly distributed the binary initially mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the beginning, after, okay, a few million years, especially the first 100, 200 million years, we see a significant decline of the binary fraction at the cluster center due to those, uh, you know, uh, okay. raw soft binary disruptions. And then after about a gig a year, we see something different. Binary begin to pile up at the center and you see a, a radio dependence of binary fraction, which is higher in the center and lower in the outskirt. Okay. And then when we compare to observation, it's a perfect agreement with uh, Milong, et cetera. You know, uh, uh, many people have done observation using global cluster. They also find similar trend, higher binary fraction in the center and lower binary fraction in the outskirts. Yeah. So that is a result from, actually from uh, mass aggregation due to tubularization. Yes. So yes. it's, a, yeah, that's what uh, they observe in global cluster and mm -hmm. also, you know, has been confirmed from embody simulations. Then I'm wondering, okay, our 85 open cluster, they are younger, they are lower dense. So yeah. we are thinking, should we observe similar trend as global cluster or Opposite one, like those uh, simulation prediction, you know, mm -hmm. um, soft binary disruption in the center, you know, it's the opposite trend. So that is uh, something inspired us to do this work to investigate binary star evolution in different environments. And something I want to uh, mention that is because in um, in the la last year we used these four times of uh, cluster to infer infer that the local star formation history in the solar neighborhood okay. agrees with those hierarchical star formation, which mm -hmm. I also mentioned a little bit in the introduction, the hierarchical star formation. So in this star formation scenario, it can generate compact star cluster, which is bound, accounting for 30% of the all population. And however, 70% of the stars produced from this scenario is are born in those filamentary you know, groups, which okay. will be unbound once the gas is removed. Yeah. So yeah. that would be interesting. It's because we have 60% uh, of the open cluster is filamentary time. And yeah. we are wondering, okay, if they disrupt so quickly, yes. we are thinking that the binary, initial binary population might be preserved much better than mm. those clusters after a mm. long time, you know, mm. evolution. Yes. So that is also something, you know, we find it interesting to see, huh? Yeah. We have, it's a filamentary one. How will we different from those uh, globular clusters, which is a pretty old. Right, right. Very cool, very cool. So that based on that, so uh, we started our uh, investigation of this uh, paper. And so the data actually in this paper, we didn't, Derive membership. 
So all the membership, as uh, we mentioned in the section two, is, uh, you know, we took the membership we already identified. Uh -huh. So we combined four paper. So 2021, two paper, and last year, also uh, another paper from my student. So yeah. totally 85 open clusters. Of course, last year, 2022, upon uh, B, we investigate all the property of 85 open clusters. And yeah. based on that, so I want to mention is that um, nowadays we have many open cluster catalog available. And I also, uh, Okay. Uh, use a friend of friend method, you know, to uh, derive those uh, open cluster catalog uh, with uh, my collaborator Liu Lei in 2019. Yes. But I want to mention that when in this world, we don't use the catalog, pro, you know, the membership produced from large uh, catalog. Yeah. The reason is that we want to investigate those outskirts, you know, extended structure. Yeah. That is one reason. And yeah. that is the reason we use this uh, machine learning algorithm. Stargo. Oh, really? So it has the advantage. So Stargo, yeah, which was developed by my uh, collaborators, who actually is the painting painter for my um, ah. oil painting. <laughs> yes. Very good. Okay. Okay. I'm yeah. Good. And uh, Yuan Zhen so developed this Stargo. And actually, you know, did we find that um, Stargo is very good at finding, you know, it's a fine structure in the outskirt. That's why we use it to first discovered the uh, title tag of coma brandis. Okay. So that's the first title tag discovered in that star cluster. And after that, we continue to use this uh, method. So the advantage for it is it can, you know, it's a very robust uh, membership. So yeah. as you can see, the membership probability is 95%. There of course, go. we can define 95, 90, depending on our scientific motivation. It will increase the membership, yes. And then um, based on this uh, robust membership, that's why we in derive the member for these 85 open clusters. Okay. As I also mentioned before, we use these 85 open clusters to, the in to classify morphology. That's also another reason why we use it. If the membership is not robust, how can we say that it's elongated, you know? Because yeah. that would be contaminated in the outskirts. Yes, so um, that's why we are very cautious selecting members. So we're using this uh, machine learning uh, algorithm. Okay, very nice. Yeah, yeah and I'm then sure. based um, mm -hmm. and then actually uh, something, okay, let's go to figure one. I want to introduce it's uh, how we derive or identify the binary. So actually the binary uh, population we identify is only unresolved binaries. I want to uh, emphasize that. Yeah. So okay. it's, um, we didn't deal with, uh, you know, resolved binary because we didn't use a uh, spectra in this mm -hmm. um, paper yet. So we based on a Gaia DR3 data, as you can see, we use a player list as an example. So mm -hmm. when those unresolved binaries, so which means unresolved binaries, two stars cannot separate or resolve by Gaia photometry. So yes. Gaia, we consider as, one star. Mm -hmm. And then this unresolved binary, usually they will um, become brighter and redder in the CMD compared to the main sequence stars, yeah, yeah. Which, you, mm -hmm. which follow this uh, red isochrome, it's the backspitting isochrome. Yes. Then, okay, so now we uh, need to identify a region where the binary uh, candidate locates. So in this paper, we define the binary region as um, max ratio larger than 0.4. Okay. So the reason okay. is that, um, of course, for in the main sequence, that is the max ratio equal, you know, it's, a, it's the smallest, uh, you know, it's a, it's a single star. Right. And then yeah. we right. use uh, divide to larger than 0.4, the reason is, as you can see those, um, we have uh, some uh, outlier, you know, uh, region. So yeah. those are uh, blue dots. So the blue dots region is below Q less than 0.4 because uh -huh. due to photometry uncertainty, we okay. cannot confidently say that, okay, below 0.4 is due to photometry uncertainty or they are really binary uh, candidates. Okay. So that's why we exclude anything, you know, below 0.4. Gotcha. And then those uh, above 0.4 indicate as the dotted curve 
that is the binary uh, region. So uh, highlighted as those orange dots, that's mm -hmm. are the binary uh, mm -hmm. candidates. Then it's, um, so the binary fraction, it's uh, actually, uh, we have an equation to define the binary fraction is uh, in equation one. So you can see that it's, if we go to, that's a very simple equation to define the binary uh, fraction mm -hmm. to equation one. Yes. So that is uh, using the binary uh, number we counted in the binary region, defined, uh, divided by the total uh, number of binary and single in that region. Okay. Okay. So that is the definition. And oh. you can also notice that this binary fraction is only for max ratio larger than 0.4. Yes. Okay. So that is usually the binary fraction, you know, for all paper, you know, we always measure, okay, what is the, uh, Max ratio, you know, uh, applied to the binary fraction. Yes. Okay, so now uh, we may go back to uh, uh, figure one again, because yes. uh, some people may have concern, okay, this binary region is very limited. It's not the whole region in, yes. The, the yes. I, I, uh, in the CMD. So right. I will tell you the reason why. So the upper limit of this binary region, as you, if it go higher, it will be contaminated by those uh, fast rotating stars. And the fast rotating star is also become rapid in uh, the main sequence. Yes, yes. So it's uh, that's so-called those extended main sequence turn off. So yeah. we want to exclude that. And then the lower limit 0.5 solar mass. The upper limit is for uh, magnitude, uh, absolute magnitude of a G band and the lower, uh, boundary is a uh, 0.5 solar mass. So that is okay. the uh, okay. lower limit, you know, we uh, to avoid the contamination from those pre may sequence stars have yes. accretion disks or envelopes, which will also, you know, become greater. And that will be one another source of contaminations. So that is the reason that okay. we have a limited you know, region of the binary selection. Of course, we have some assumption based on that, which means that we assume this selected region, the binary fraction, can be applied to all the stars yes. in the star clusters. Yeah. Okay. So which means that we assume the binary fraction doesn't depend on, you know, it's uh, the mass of the star, you know, or in this uh, cluster. That yep. is our assumption. So yes. we at the mean, you know, it's uh, the assumption, you know, is is an approximation. Yes, and then um, the last one in Perfect. figure. Uh, Panel C, mm -hmm. so it's the um, how we write the uh, uncertainty. So because it's uh, we all worry about okay, what's the uncertainty? So actually, the uncertainty here we do is uh, we calculate the uncertainty based on the photometric error. So okay. as you can see, we count the number of star based on the location in a C in a CMD. Mm -hmm. Each star have photometric uncertainty. So which means that they will be uncertain, they will move out of the box and inside yeah. the box. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then what we do is we reassign, you know, it's um, regenerate artificial star, which is the background green dots, based on the observed uh, magnitude and color. And right. we assume a Gaussian distribution for those uh, color and magnitude for each individual stars. The right. mean of the Gaussian distribution is the observed value. And the uh, the standard deviation is the observational area. And yes. then we, based on this dis distribution, real example, you know, artificial stars. We do this for 2,000 times. So that's, it's, you can see that some uh -huh. of the larger area, you can see those um, uncertainty region, the stars may locate it. So yes. which means that in some run, this uh, binary will go out or some single star will enter the binary region. So uh -huh. this will generate the uncertainty of the, uh, binary fraction. So yeah. the standard deviation of the binary fraction in this 2000 runs, that is our uncertainty of the okay. binary fraction. Okay. Yes. Third, so I'm with you. I'm with you. Yep. Okay. So that's how we derive the binary fraction. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now generally we know how we derive the unresolved binaries. Okay. So some people may have a concern. So because Unresolved binary, right? It's which means that they are too close. Yes. Then Gaia cannot resolve. What if they are so far away? Oh, they are resolved, right? Yeah. So which means that this method will underestimate those stars. The wide ones. Uh, 
Y binaries yeah, is yeah. already considered as singles, and we mix them in this uh, method. They will locate it as an individual single stars. Very good. Okay, so yes. now let's move on to the uh, another uh, section. How we do this completeness correction? Okay, completeness corrections. Figure equation yes. two. Okay, just waiting for the bandwidth. Yes, and. So for this completeness uh, correction, uh, correct correction, sorry, and how we do this correction, as we mentioned, we our method to identify unresolved binaries, which means that we mix those resolved binaries, and you can imagine that this will affect very close star cluster especially because when they are close, their angular separation is large, right? Oh, okay. Those binaries. And right. it's easier to be resolved by Gaia. So yeah. which means that yeah. uh, the bias will be uh, significant for uh, very close binary, yeah. uh, close uh, clusters. And now let's go to uh, the next figure two. Um, Ooh, figure good. two, and I will show you Ooh, that nice. is true. We already checked that. In figure two. That's a beautiful table of all 85 and figure Yes, two. I will <laughs> you mention that. <laughs> <Glad you agree. laughs> Very good. Okay, we'll do a global and zoom in as need be here. Yes, this one. So in panel A, <laughs> so first let's only take a look at panel A. Okay. Yeah, so you can see that uh, the panel A is the dependence of the binary fraction we just mentioned from the CMD, the binary fraction, we're just counting the stars. Yeah. And generally you can see that the binary fraction increase towards uh, further distance. Uh, the, right, so uh, zeros on yeah. the left and- it's Distance uh, in parsecs. Yeah, on the right, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. because it's, uh, oh, I want to uh, forget to mention that all this data is uh, mostly within the solar neighborhood, 500 parsecs, a few above 500. Okay. Uh, something you know so it's very you know we are in very local um, yeah, it's region solar neighborhood and then yeah and then you can see that it's really increased so that is uh we worry about that okay which means that this is not intrinsic how how can you know binary fraction you know when you go further away the cluster the binary fraction increase so yeah. that is uh, you know <laughs> artificial and it's a bias so and then we want to correct this uh dependence so how can we correct that? So now it's uh, our correction is, okay, so we need to go back to the, okay, so we need to go back to the uh, text again. Text. Sorry, we need to uh, go back to the text. It's all um, good. The two page up. Two page up, the equation two. Before the, no, uh, before the table. Before. Yeah, sorry, you know, this uh -huh. table. Yeah, we just have a little bandwidth. Table. Yeah, here, right, we're good. yeah, we're good. the uh -huh. equation Hold two. On. So yeah, two and, so we have some approximation. Uh, guy uh, limit to identify, you know, to separate single stars. We consider as 0 0.6 arc seconds, uh -huh. 0.6 arc seconds. So that is for very good uh, photometric uh, solutions, 0.6 arc seconds. For sure, it's a uh, result into a single star, uh, star yeah. if the separation. But when the angular separation lower than 0 0.6, so they will uh, cannot distinguish it. Yes. So now it's uh, this is an angular separation, and if you uh, when we transfer it into physical separation, that's the separation okay. between two components of the binary, and we do some approximation is that we approximate the semi-major axis of the binary system as okay. the physical separation of the uh, bi a component two component primary and secondary, and yeah. you can see that um. Uh, equation two is this approximation, you know, projective separation. Projective yeah. uh, separation, physical separation, is mm -hmm. can be approximate. You know, it's a, it ranges from point A semi major axis to point one point two okay. uh, semi major axis. So we take one as the you know it's uh, the average one, average value for yeah. those approximation. So nice. and which means that the semi major axis is. Uh, is the separation between two components. Uh -huh. And then, okay, thanks to a previous paper, uh, Ragen Haven 2010. If you go slightly, yes. uh, scroll down a bit, yes. Mm -hmm. And Ragen Haven 2010, so um, this group already derived, you know, based on the field star, to provide as the semi-image access distribution 
for uh, FGK stars already. Okay. And actually, if you remember, we uh, when I introduced the selection region in the figure one, so yeah. we have a lower and upper limit. So yes. actually, that refers mostly to FGK stars. Okay. So that region. So which means that we can use uh, Ragenhaven 2010 some image as distribution to approximate the distribution, you know, cool. A uh, for our uh, open clusters. And you. then, okay, imagine that you have a Gaussian distribution uh, of the semi major axis. Okay. And this 0 0.6 angular separation, if you, at different distance, it can transfer into different A value, right? Yes. So, yes. Yes. And then we have a cut of this uh, Gaussian region, A value. Okay, which means that, for example, at a distance of um, 600 parsecs, mm -hmm. if we refer to 360 AU, so that is the semi major axis, so corresponding to 0 0.6 arc seconds. Okay. So, which means that below 360 AU, that's our unresolved binaries, which we recover. But for those populations above 360 AU, we cannot recover it. And then we can calculate this completeness fraction. You know, it's just a very simple integration for the Gaussian distribution, you know, yes. to yes. this upper limit of this semi major axis. And then that is the value. If uh, So now we go back to uh, figure two again. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then you can see that, yeah, panel B, that yes. is the completeness fraction. And you can see that the completeness fraction at uh, uh -huh. 100 passes is only about 50%. Yes. It goes to above you know, 75% right. at the 500 passes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that is uh, based on uh, uh, yeah. Ragnar Harvins semi major axis. Okay, so now when we have this completeness fraction, okay, we assume that at a given distance, so we apply this completeness fraction to these all the star cluster at a given distance, at yes. a you know, different uh, distance beam. And oh. then we divide it, the binary fraction we just derive by this completeness fraction. Yes. So that is the, the resulting in feed okay. uh, panel C. Okay. So after that, you can see that the dependence of uh, com the binary, uh, the, the dependence of this binary fraction after completeness uh, correction so that's why we add a c in the uh, you know in the label of the ah, got it okay binary c so Thank which you. means that complete is corrected yes. and you can see that this dependence uh, almost dis disappear and you can see the spearman uh, correlation coefficient becomes 0.05 there you go means no no yep. relation at all. Yep. Yep. so it's um if we zoom out a bit and then you can see a and c the difference. So yeah, let's, if let's... we don't do, yeah, if we don't do a correction, that is a panel A, and yeah. then after correction is panel C. Yeah. So so we are uh, appropriately correct uh, this uh, complete fraction. So after what we can use this uh, complete corrected binary fraction to infer, you know, the binary evolution in yeah. star cluster later, oh. and then okay, so some smart readers, you know, may be not content because. They will notice that this binary fraction is only for Q larger than 0.4. Yes. So which means that we only, you know, it's we have something mixing. It's for Q less than 0.4, right? It's uh, and okay, so it's uh, in the the next section we do a binary. Uh, we also derive the total binary fraction oh, good. for good. based on this uh, binary fraction. So that's called global uh, binary fraction. Okay, yes. no, no, it's a uh, Stay in this uh, page a little bit up. Yeah. So that is uh, the, yes, maybe it's uh, a little bit up. It's uh, the uh, the practice section. Next, uh, practice page, sorry. Okay. Yes, yes, here um, with the- Ah, here we go, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no problem. So so you can see, um, yeah, we, we, we put out uh, some equations. Actually, this equation just how you understand, okay. So a given different uh, max ratio profile, actually we will infer different total binary fraction because what we derive now is for the binary fraction like Q larger than 0.4. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we use different max ratio profile, 
Yes. Actually, we will derive quite different total bond infection. Yes. So it's, um, and then, okay, of course, the assumption is that we just, for example, uh, the first bond infection uh, uh, profile we use is from Coven Hohen 2007. Mm -hmm. That's uh, from our, uh, my uh, collaborator, so uh, Thais Coven Hohen, who also worked with me together in my current university in Suzhou. So, and then, this um, binary reflection is uh, he derived for based on those very young uh, associations. Yes. And then, okay, so as you can see in the binary reflection profile, it's uh, equation three. It looks like this, right? Q minus 0 0.4, which means that it will have a, the, the right. binary reflection will increase toward Q with a very a small value. And then, okay, how we do the correction? We assume the value we derive is uh, for Q larger than 0.4. We just extrapolate it, yes. following this uh, distribution, and then we will get equation four. That's the total binary fraction. I'm with you. Okay, so, and this one, you can see that we have an error because uh, Coven Hoban 2007, they provide uncertainty. We Good. just, uh, that's why we can derive that. And then we have another two different binary uh, Okay. Racial profile. So that is the equation five and equation six. Roughly twice as many as in Q grade. Yes. Or roughly two. Roughly twice as many. Yeah, roughly two. Yes, yeah. true. Okay. And and then it's um yeah, I think you know it's a friend, you you have a notice one important uh question. So I will answer that, you know, after introduce another two um profile. And then okay. we come back to that. Okay. And then you can see that uh, equation five, that's uh, for uniform distribution. Yes. Uh, no, sorry. It's uh, for Fisher 2005. Mm -hmm. Fisher 2005. So this uh, max uh, ratio distribution. Uh, uh, and you can see that okay. Okay. it's the opposite. It has a peak around Q between 0.9 and 1. So yes. which means that it's opposite. This is the coven hoven and this is a Fisher. So yes. you can see that they are completely opposite. And when we do this uh, correction for total binary fraction, you can see that uh, for fixture 2005, you only times 1.5, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. not as large as uh, uh, coven hoven The reason yeah. is that it's, uh, we already mentioned in the paper, the use of coven hoven might overestimate. Mm -hmm. The reason is that because, um, uh, Coven Hoven did write the max ratio uh, profile based on association. That's extremely young uh, you know, stellar mm -hmm. groups. Sure. So they may have a, a larger fraction of uh, Y binaries, which might, you know, it's uh, not present in older or uh, involved clusters. So that may, you know, it's, uh, that's why if you slightly overestimate that, that it's, you can see that, you know, it's, um, this ratio is different. Cool. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the last one is uniform. Okay, okay. Um, actually uniform, you know, it's uh, we only you know it's uh, times 1.7 as the ratio you know, to get the total binary fraction. And it's very similar to fixture. And actually, you know, nowadays uh, a lot more observation, you know, tend to suggest that for those uh, solar times that the binary, they follow, you know, uniform uh, distribution. Of okay. the max ratio. Okay. So it's uh, also, you know, it's, um, I also really like this uh, max um, ratio profile. It's play safe, you know. Yeah, yeah, very good. Good. I'm with you. Yeah, it's, um, and, but you can see that uh, the, di the difference from Coven Hoven is a five, equation five and six, it didn't provide uncertainty because it's right. this uniform have no uncertainty you know it's exact number and oh. fixture 2005 also didn't provide uncertainty okay. so based on this um concern no uncertainty you know available for all uh, max ratio profo uh, profile and also the concern of uh coven hoven you know max ratio profile might overestimate the total bar reflection yeah. so in the following uh investigation of the global property of binary fraction our result is based on the completeness corrective binary fraction, Correct. which was shown in figure two panel C. Yes. So the y axis. So, yes. so the result is based on panel C. 
So figure two. So the complete is correct binary fraction. Figure two uh panel C. Yeah. So it's based on the complete correct binary fraction. So we didn't use the total binary fraction to infer the result because as you can see that there will be a huge difference if we apply different max ratio profile. Yes. Yes. But yes. You, oh so I, now okay, so we are curious. Yeah. What will be uh what will this uh, boundary fraction you know show us the properties in different cluster? So now let's uh take a look. Um, let's move on to the next section, the global properties of uh, these boundaries, and let's come to figure three. So figure three, yes, and figure three is a fee, you know it's a relation between the boundary fraction and the cluster age and total cluster mass. So actually, uh, a previous uh, paper already, you know, in global cluster, they also investigate that. So that's why we want to see whether we see different or similar trend. And mm -hmm. in panel A, it's the dependence of the boundary fraction with age. Oh. And you can see that, hmm, the light, very large scatter. And One. generally, if we remove those uh, large boundary fraction above 0.4, Maybe slightly we see some trend is uh, declining, no? Mm. fraction with uh, age. Mm. But I have to say this is not very significant because mm. of this mm. uh, large, you know, scatter. Right. So we need to be cautious in interpreting that. Good. And then the in the panel B, that's the boundary fraction dependence on the total cluster mass. Mm -hmm. So generally below 200 solar mass is a large scatter. Generally, you, you can see that it's a uh, slightly yeah. maybe an increase from uh, lower boundary fraction to higher boundary fraction below 200 solar mass. Yeah. But yeah. usually below 200 solar mass, these are very low density in those uh, star clusters. Mm -hmm. They have a large scatter. Yeah. But generally, one trend is obvious. When you go to higher mass cluster, okay. the boundary fraction decrease. Yes. That is a more uh, obvious trend you know, if we consider the you know, general trend for low mass and high uh, mass uh, cluster. Yeah. But I admit, you know, it's uh, in order to get a more robust trend, we may need the data from the future or, you know, oh. uh, larger uh, samples. Okay. We'll come yes, back. Yes. So it's, um, now it's, um, we are not content, you know. This relation. No, no, it's yeah. great. We'll come back to it. <laughs> Not so robust. So we need to move on. We want to find out, okay, which is more, you know, uh, which parameter in the star cluster really have show a dependence on the binary fraction. So now it's the next one we investigate is the stellar density. So stellar density is very, actually, it's a very important parameter of for open cluster. It shows, you know, it affects the dynamical evolution. So now let's go to the next uh, section sure. is the boundary fraction versus the stellar density. And mm -hmm. in figure, um, is it figure four? Yep, figure four, yep. Yeah, and then in figure four, we do first, okay, let's do a rough investigation in panel A. So okay. now what we do here, we investigate the boundary fraction, okay, so dependence on the central stellar density. So the X axis is the stellar density within hard mass radius. Okay. Okay. okay, if we see all the points, hmm, we don't see any dependence. So it's uh, the boundary fraction doesn't see, right? And then we separate it into different age. So the blue points is less than 100, solar, uh, 100 million year, and the orange point is larger than 100 million year. And okay, we okay. exclude two points in uh, panel A, the lower two point with uh, gray circles because these two have, a, uh, you uh. know, these, yes. Very uh, big morphology. It's uh, okay. a coma brand. It's a one, it's group X have a two filaments. So it's uh, a, we can, you know, it's good that it's a, they have a very uh, uncertain, you know, to determine the center. And then, okay, if we exclude those two outliers, okay. we can see that for those uh, more older cluster in the orange point, generally you can see that, okay, the binary fraction decrease yeah. with a higher um, density. Yes. Okay, so now this is a relative older. Why we choose 100 million year? So the reason is that usually, you know, in the Milky Way, so open cluster is formed in the Milky Way disk. So most of them, you know, they will disrupt at the order of 100 or 200 million year. So which means that they will develop a tidal tail, a starting yeah. disruption. Yeah. So that is a, it's a 
dynamical uh, time scale uh, we choose, a okay. typical survival time scale, we can say. Yeah, okay, so now, orange dog keep us some, okay, encourage us, okay, we might find something, maybe, you know, it's dependence, you know, it's uh, the density. So now in panel B, we further investigate that, you know, we cut the binary, uh, uh, we measure the binary fraction in different annually. As you can see, the yeah. orange, uh, blue, and green dot is a uh, different energy inside how much radius, one to two, how much radius, and two to three, how much radius. We you. didn't go to too much further because the number of members drops significantly. Yeah. And then you can see, okay, uh, in okay, something, okay, yeah. to ensure the robust of this uh, figure, yeah. we each energy, we need to make sure more than two free solar, uh, no, sorry, free binary candidates, you know, more than three oh, binary okay. candidates okay. exist. Okay. Otherwise, okay. it's two row numbers that takes this. Uh, yeah. So now you can see that, okay, the Triples. gray dots is the running mean of uh, the same, you know, it's uh, each being have the same number of uh, stars. And then right. you can see that this trend is uh, more robust because uh, the Spearman coefficient for the gray dot is all point. Yes. Minus 0 0.8. So, which means that the binary fraction depends on the stellar density inside the cluster. In the very center, high density, the binary fraction is lower, lower. but in the outskirts, it increases. So, actually, this trend is opposite to the global clusters, which yes. I mentioned before. Yes. So, now, okay, we are interesting. Okay, that's something different mm. from global cluster. Now, let's move on to different environments. As I mentioned at the beginning, we have a filamentary, fractal, halo, yeah. and tidal pairs. Yep. So these four types of environments actually indicate a sequence of uh, stellar densities. So now let's uh, move on to figure Very, five. Very cool. Very nice. Figure five. And then, uh, yes, figure five. Here we go, radial bins. Yes, and then, okay, so this figure five, okay, four environments. Um, why we know I emphasize a few, you know, we environments because it's a different environment we, uh, in simulation. It already show, you know, the binary disrupt, you know, interaction, you know, differently in yes. different density environment. Yes. So now it's a um, filamentary and fractal type. They are younger than a hundred million years. And the density, so in our 2022 p uh, paper, they have the lowest stellar density in fractal and filamentary. Okay, yes. and then the highest density is halo time. Yes. And then tidal time is in the middle. And then in this figure, how we plot this figure, we just group all the factors of the same time. And then as you can see, X axis is uh, one uh, half mass radius. Second one is between one to two. And the third one is between three, two to uh, three. Yes. Okay, and then this is a box plot. We can show that it can show you the mean and some uh, outliers also. So generally, you can see that the um, trend agrees, you know, it's uh, with the figure, uh, what we show in figure four. So right. the binary fraction is lower at the center, you know, where the stellar density is higher and then it increased to the outer part. Uh, of course, this is, um, hmm. we have uh, some scatter and also outliers. Mm -hmm. That's true, okay. it's, uh, but for the general trend, you can see that it follow this trend, binary fraction dependence on the radio uh, Where you are. directions. Yes. Yeah, and then um, okay. And also we calculate the mean binary fraction. So in the filamentary and the fractal one, they have the highest uh, mean binary uh, fractions. So if uh, we yeah, well, somehow I had a boo boo there. <laughs> yes, here is you see the number. Mm -hmm. Uh. Um, no, it's a will zoom out a, a zoom out a bit. I already see the number uh, above. above going scroll. Yeah, I think so. Uh, nice and slow until you get there. Yes, yes. Stop here. Okay. You can see the number here. That's it's a mean binary fraction. So 23.6, uh, 23.2 is for the uh -huh. filamentary and fractal. That's uh -huh. the mean binary fraction. Uh, and the time and the halo time actually uh is the lowest. I think the halo time it's uh, only 14 
So the average binary fraction, uh, if you scroll up, yep. is uh, about 14, uh, gotcha. 14.8 for the hello time. Oh. So the on the other hand, yeah, this is the densest cluster, very dense, have a compact yes. uh, core and the hello. And you can see that Your from name. the very low dense filamentary fractal, they have 23 to 24, and the high uh, density cluster only 15%. Okay. You can see this already, you know, a mean binary fraction dependence on the total density of the cluster. Of course, uh, uh, tidal data is in the middle because their density is also in the middle, about 21%. Yes. I'm yes, with. and then, okay, so based on this different environment, we want to make sure what we observe is, uh, you know, not an average effect of different cluster. So now if we move to the next uh, figure, figure six, then we want to show the uh, reader, you know, that's for the environment, figure five. But when we move on to figure six, we show in the video clusters. So from different time, filamentary, fractal, halo, and tidal tail. Okay. And then it's, that is for individual cluster. And all these uh, clusters, they have a larger number of a binary stars so to ensure it's a robust results and you can see that all of them show the dependence of binary fraction so for inside out is uh, you know mm. lower at the center and increase to the outskirts yes so x is in the unit of a hard mass radius yes okay so now this confirms that okay. the binary fractions okay depends on cluster centric distance low higher that's the environment you know in the center binary fraction is lower, lower binary stellar density environment binary fraction is higher. I'm with you. Then as we mentioned before, compared to global cluster, it's opposite. So in this figure, if it's a global cluster, it will be higher in the center and lower in the outskirts. So I mentioned before, in global cluster, this is due to the mass aggregation. Yes. yes. It's a high mass star sink to the center. And that. usually high mass star, they have a higher binary fraction. That is the reason. Yes. So now, okay, if we see this, which means that the binary, uh, the mass aggregation in all this cluster cannot be significant. Correct. Yes. I'm with so you. Otherwise, we, we flash our face. Our face. It's, it's not true, right? It's a, we can infer that, okay, the mass aggregation cannot be significant. Otherwise, it will change the radial dependence of the binary fraction. And okay, so now our next step is to investigate whether this is true dynamically from the mass aggregation. Okay. So in figure seven, That's now let's take a look. Great idea. Uh, how depend, you know, the mass aggregation looks After... like. Yes, figure seven. And okay. figure seven is very, you know, it's a quick check of the mean dependence of different annually in a unit of hard mass radius to the center, from the center to the outskirts. Yes. Okay. The, Error bar is the standard deviation of each uh, annually. And okay. you can see that filamentary and fractal one, you know, generally is a mean mass is in the center is lower and higher in the Oscar, which means that it's something like okay. reverse mass yeah. And <laughs> of course, uh, in the older a denser cluster, for example, MGC 6475. Right hello here. time in the yep. middle right here you, we generally see some slightly higher binary uh you know mean mass in the sand in the first beam and drop to the second and third right. beam also right. play at this also we see some trend not the next one play at this uh Co sorry praise the p halo yeah, yeah play at this is also you can say some trends but however i want to point out given the large you know error bar this is not very significant. Okay. Not very significant. Uh -huh. And then, okay, so based on this, yeah, some reader may notice this is not the traditional way to investigate mass aggregation. Okay. So when I do my PhD, you know, I I also use the traditional way is the mass function. Yes. You know, the dependence of the mass function at different region, how the slow change yes. will indicate the fraction of a high mass and low mass star. Okay. okay, so we have a, this is a quick chart and then let's move on to figure uh, eight. Let's see, you know, if we change different method, will the mass aggregation, you know, yes. change? Yes. 
and figure eight is the mm -hmm. max uh, segregation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then here, um, what we do, as uh, I mentioned, you know, filamentary and fractal time, they are, you know, the morphology is elongated, right? Filamentary fractal. Fractal is very fluffy. And also tidal tail. Tidal tail have two arms. So which means that three, mm -hmm. at least a filamentary and tidal, they are elongated. So which means that, okay, so in this one, in order to investigate that, you know, more properly. So the one before we use enemy. Okay, for this one, okay, we are thinking, if the shade is elongated, now let's cut it into three parts. Elongated, okay. so now it's the center part, you know. Oh, uh, of the filament. The center the part filament. is the within the hard mass radius. Okay, we cut it, you know, the center part is within hard mass radius. Okay. And then on the right hand side of the center, this part. And then on the left hand side, something like two elongated part, right? It's uh, and then the center, okay. changing, leading arm, something like that. Okay, so you. now we want to see if we change the region like that, will the mass segregation, you know, it's a phenomenon change. Yes. And then, uh, okay, uh, we have a lot of color here. Sorry, you know, it's, I, I will explain a little bit. It's and right. the blue uh, dot ticker is for the inner region. Yes. And the orange dot is, you can consider the left-hand side. Yeah. And then the, all, the green dotted line is on the right-hand side. Yes. And you can compare. So for this one, you can compare. Yeah. If the blue region have an alpha, you know, absolute value smaller than the outer uh, the green. part, yeah. that indicate segregation, you know, it's, which means that the slope is a factor in the center. So when the slope, it's a yes. alpha is yes. the slope of the yes. mass function. Okay. What okay. I mean is the absolute value, right? It's a, if okay. it's a small, it's a flat. If it's a larger, so it's a, have a small fraction of a high mass dust. Right. So, and then, okay, so uh, please also notice the uncertainty, you know, 0 0.25, 0 0.3 mm -hmm. is also large. Yeah. yeah it's um. Yeah. So this it's uncertainty, the... the reason is that it's, uh, you know, the number of uh, open cluster is uh, not as large, you know, it's 100 or 10 times smaller than global clusters. Yeah. So that also, you know, introduced this large uncertainty. So mm -hmm. generally, um, we do not see a uh, mass segregation in filamentary time. No uh, mass segregation, you know. Instead, you know, we do see the some, youngest. Uh, the, yeah, the youngest one. Yeah. We we even see you know something you know something like a uh, reverse one, but um in the yeah. fractal and halo yeah, uh, or tidal tail. Oh, so yeah. for example, those um BH ninety nine, the fractal one BH ninety nine second row. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on left hand side. Yeah, yes. uh, we see some segregation because in the inner side you can see the slope is one point minus one point eight outer skirt minus two point three. <laughs> Okay, yeah. that is an indication for mass application. Yeah. And that some of them, they do see, okay, of, of course, another one, yeah. MGC 6475, the halo time. Halo, right. Which, um, if you remember, it I also do. show mass application, you know, for the mean mass distribution. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, you can see that the mean, the slope in the inner uh, region is a 0.1. And then mm -hmm. the outer, outer region is a minus 1.3 to minus 1.4. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. so it seems it indicates uh -huh. mass segregation. Yeah, but our conclusion is that we observe hints of mass segregation, some evidence, but it's not robust. As you can see, the uncertainty is 0.3 for MGC 6475, uh, right? It's 0 0.3. So, yeah. which makes this uh, change of a um, max function slow, if not significant. Not really uh, robust. It's within so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's uh, our conclusion is that generally for some of the cluster, we do find some, you know, uh, evidence or hints of masturbation. But for generally for all the cluster, we do not observe significant masturbation. Right. Which means that's, that that's a first statement. mass segregation does not affect the cluster globally. Fair enough. Which means that we those are uh, my sample need more time, you know, when the mastication 
to affect it globally and then move the um, binary stars into the center yeah. to generate something like a global cluster, mm -hmm. you know, observe. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, that is the reason, you know, why we don't see that. So not enough time yet. Cool. Another exactly. reason. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yes. Another reason is that don't forget that open cluster survival time scale is really short, sure. 100 to 200 million years, yeah. which means that they don't have an environment to nurture them to let two body realization to be dominant. You know, it's a global cluster. They are very lucky that in those uh, isolated <laughs> areas, you know, they they have a lax, uh, you know, time, they, they are also very massive, which means that they have a long time to let the two body realization yeah, yeah. to be dominant, yeah, very yeah. dominant. Yeah. And then the, they move the binary to the center. But you know, I have to say, maybe majority of my samples, they don't have a chance, like global cluster. They yeah. already disrupted, you know, after Easily. a few, uh, a dozen million years, a hundred million years. Year. So okay. they never have a chance to be mature, yeah. you know, in the yeah. binary evolution, like global cluster. Mm -hmm. That well, might be what we observe now, maybe also, you know, uh, in the future, and maybe in the future, they were already completely disrupted. And why well, I want to emphasize the filamentary one, and actually all of the filamentary one uh, in my previous uh, paper, we showed that even though they are young, they are only some of most of them. They are a few dozen million year, right? Very young. Yes. But we all found expansion signature in this uh, cluster, cool. which means that they are formed around the filament of the molecular cloud after the gas is gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are uh, become you know a uh, disruption. They become a uh, um, um, physical unbound. Yeah. yeah. So they never have a chance not to. They have start to expand and yeah, before be, they even get going. You know, yeah. Tortured by the uh, galactic ties, they never have a chance to let the polarization to be dominant. You know, to move message uh, star to the center. So that is the another important reason. You know, cool. to foster the binary evolution. Uh, to get the result like global cluster, we really, really need a physical, you know, gravitational bound environment, which lasts for a long dynamically time. long time scale to let two polarization to be dominant. And yeah. then they will move then they will. the binary population to the center to generate this, uh, you know, opposite dependence, which I show you today. Very nice. Beautiful. So now, okay, so uh, I hold off you. Now you get the idea, okay. In the solar neighborhood, based on our 85 open cluster, the binary fraction dependent, the most important parameter is stellar density. Yes. And the binary fraction for those clusters is higher at the outskirts and lower in the center, opposite yes. to global cluster. Bundlers. Now, okay, so in the last part of uh, our concern in this study is that, okay, now we see the binary fraction in different uh, you know, location. How yeah. about the dynamical evolution? Because the binary, okay. you know, it's a may also, you know, infer, yeah. you know, some binary, uh, dynamical evolution. Yeah. And so now it's the next uh, steps. We investigate, okay, in the figure nine, we investigate the rate velocity dispersion. Okay, why we want to do that? Okay, so that's something I would like to do, you know, in the past, oh, okay, because of thanks to yeah, yeah. yeah thanks to Gaia, you know, it's uh, the high uh, accuracy, accurate um, promotion yeah. and the accuracy about 0.2 kilometer per second. So, and then we are wondering, yeah. okay, we can use that to infer, to mm -hmm. calculate the velocity dispersion, uh -huh. the one top. dimension velocity dispersion. I have to emphasize that because it's um, for people, you know, interested in 3D velocity dispersion, we need radio velocities. Yes. Okay. Um, so now it's uh, based on Gaia. We only use the proper motion. Okay. Now we separate our sample, you know, the same cluster into two parts inside hard mass radius, the center outside hard mass radius. Okay. And then you can see okay. that the okay. right. velocity dispersion, you know, converted from proper motion, you know, two component. You can consider this as tangential velocity dispersion. And if we see the upper and on the right hand side histogram, generally you can see that um, velocity dispersion is larger at the outskirts and smaller inside the hard mass radius. Yes. yes. And in the in the center color figure, so yeah. the triangle is for 
uh, velocity expression in the outskirt, larger than heart mass radius, yes. and the circle is for inside the heart mass radius. And you. then, you know, you can see that um, generally also you see the trend outside, you know, more triangle, you know, located at larger velocity expression. Yes. Okay, it seems yes. there's something, okay, if this is true, we should mean that, okay, so this is actually agrees with uh, dynamical, you know, uh, evolution, because if you have a two polarization, you kick out okay, the yes. low mass stars, yes, and then we yes. will expect velocity dispersion higher at the outskirts. But however, when we do this paper, we first want to know, is this true or not? Because this is the velocity expression we derive from proper motion. Yes. Right? And the proper motion is based on all our observed stars. And all our observed stars, actually, in our whole paper, is we, based on the observed stars, we in identify unresolved binaries, which means that there's a, a fraction, something like 20 to 35 fraction of the observed stars, they are actually unresolved binaries. Yes. They are not single stars. They are just, you know, cannot uh, resolve them. So now, okay, the last part is we want to check whether this is robust results or whether this is nothing. Good. So we also, you know, it's for it's good for our future study. If this is not true, which means that, okay, we need to be more careful, you know, the oh, yeah, using yeah. Um, Gaia promotion. So now uh, let's move to the next uh, slightly lower. We have a last colorful prop. Very cool. What we do in this colorful prop. Cute. Okay, so in this colorful hey. prop, okay, we run a simulation. Mm -hmm. So now before I introduce the simulation, I need to explain the background. So okay. now we have two stars. Okay, okay. binary, right? Primary, secondary. If you want to measure the promotion, the yes. promotion should refer to the very center. Yes. Very of yep. the binary. Good. good. Yeah. Yes. So yes. that is the good one. Okay, correct one. But however, don't forget that all these uh, stars we observe, we have a, a fraction of the unresolved binaries, which yeah. means that they consider as one stars, and actually they are binaries. And right. then the center, you know, measured from uh, Gaia actually is the photo center. Yeah. Photo center, if oh, you have a binary, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's dominated by the massive, uh, okay, let's use something like this. This is a primary, this is secondary. And it. then the photo center will be dominated by the primary. Yes. And then it's not the very center you know, anymore. Correct. It will be offset from the photo center and the very center. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now there will be difference of this prediction and the velocity will generate bias in the velocity expression. Indeed. So we run a, popu a binary population simulation yeah. based on our uh, Ragenhaven, you know, it's a semi major asset distribution and fixture 2005 um, mass rate of distribution. And yes. then now I want to come to the conclusion is that, okay, X axis is semi major axis, Y axis is the max ratio. Yes. And then the color scale is the bias of the tangential velocity uncertainty introduced by this, you know, uh, due to this unresolved. Uh, binary population. Okay. Okay, okay so now uh, our sample is located within 600 parsec, right? Yes. And then, as I mentioned before, it's uh, the corresponding uh, upper limit of the unresolved binary is 360 AU. So if we made a vertical line of 360 AU okay. in the AXSS, yeah, a vertical Very line. Nice. And you can see that on the left hand side, that is our bias region. So on the left hand side, and yeah. you can see that for all uns unresolved binaries, the uncertainty in the tangential velocity expression, if you go to the left hand side, you can see that some of them can be very bright, the yellow region yeah. responding goes up to one kilometer per second. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, some of them is very low, so less than 0.1, but we do have some fraction, you know, one kilometer per second. So the conclusion is that yes, yes. for our unresolved binary uh, population, if you introduce an uncertainty in the velocity expression, yes. 0.1 to one kilometer per second. Okay. So okay. that is a lot. Okay. If you go up to figure nine, which wow. we uh, show you before, oh, actually you can see that the difference between the inner 
and outside yep. is about 0. 0.1 to a few uh, 0. 0.1 to 0. Uh, 4 kilometers per second, you know, the mean uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. for those uh, velocity dispersion. Uh -huh. So which means that sequence of yeah. velocity dispersion are all under the cover those are by the bias from the unresolved binaries. Yes. So which means that we cannot explain, okay, this is a rate, you know, a polarization signature. No, we cannot make this conclusion. Right. So one thing we want to warn the reader is that in the future, if we want to derive a velocity expression for our star clusters, I am afraid, and I have to frankly say that based on, um, even Gaia have very good promotion. It's yes. still not enough because the unresolved binary really uh, have introduced a, such a severe problem, you know, because uh, the uncertainty is from 0.1 to 1 kilometer per second. Right. It's already larger than the typical velocity expression inside the star clusters. Yes. So how can we solve the problem? We need really high resolution spectroscopy to go disentangle it. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So by far, it's uh, that's some you know the last bit of uh, last bit of our paper is do this simulation. Of course, um, this will also sure. uh, I hope you know the reader it uh, can warn our future study to be more careful, uh, not over interpret the proper motion you know results. And Option is good. okay, so that that's uh, generally is our uh, paper. It's um, based on those 85 open clusters in the solar neighborhood, we are very solar neighborhood, and we derive the binary fraction for, you know, only unresolved binary, okay. So unresolved binary only, and for max ratio larger than 0.4. Yeah. Yep. At the same time, if you remember, we also do complete correction, you know, to those unresolved, you know, uh, binary uh, issue, due to those uh, separation, if they are close, they will result into single stars. And based on this corrected uh, binary fraction, yes. and we find mm -hmm. that the most important parameter dependent on binary fraction is the stellar density. Yes. Higher stellar density, lower binary fraction. Lower binary fraction corresponding to higher density region. And that is actually opposite to the global cluster. Yes. So it's uh, we see a dependence of a binary fraction lower in the center and higher in the outskirts. Yeah. And also for these four environmental, you know, uh, cluster, filamentary fractal is the lowest stellar density. They have a higher yeah. binary fraction on average, 23 to 24% binary fraction. And mm -hmm. for the very uh, high density uh, cluster halo time, they have uh, only 15%. Yes. So, and that is something, you know, we can see that it's uh, the environment, the density really play an important role in shaping the binary distribution in open clusters. And by far, mm -hmm. consistent with this radio dependence, we do not see significant uh, mesagation. So which mm -hmm. you know, is a, exists in global cluster. So only hints mm -hmm. of uh, uh, segregation is observed in some uh, mm -hmm. BH99 or you know, it's uh, some other um, halo time cluster. So we, agree, we conclude that it's uh, the, Mass aggregation does not affect our sample cluster globally. That's why we observe this uh, dependence of a binary fraction on stellar density. Okay. And then uh, lastly, I want to go back to the first page of uh, uh, a few page more. Okay, so I I think you know at the beginning it's a friend rolling of the this big table. It's uh, no. I want to. Uh, Pay, draw your attention to the big table. So it's in big this table. big table, it's uh, you can use, it's the parameter we already published. For each cluster, we, we give you the binary fraction. So uh, the first uh, row okay. is, so it's the total cluster mass, second, okay, sorry. First row is the cluster name, and then second row are uh, cluster age. mass, and then age, distance. Oh, so okay. the fifth row is the binary fraction directly computed from the Nice. Uh, CMD, and nice. then what we use, I suggest you to use is column six. Good That's problem. the binary fraction after completeness correction. That's yeah. what we use in this Thanks. paper. 
think. Yeah, and uh, column seven to nine is the total binary uh, fraction, correct, you know, following different uh, max ratio profile. Yes. But this has a larger uncertainty. So sure. please use it very cautiously. And that's uh, all the introduction for this paper. And I hope you, uh, it, this table will be useful for you. You can directly download the machine readable table from nice. AJ website. Yeah. And then, okay, I would like to go back to the first page uh, of my paper. And this is uh, the work, um, the first page, yes. Um, Bandwidth load. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I would like to thank all my uh, collaborators. Actually, this work has been done with my student, Yi Fan Wang, uh, my close collaborator, uh, Si Yun Tang from US, and uh, in the same state uh, as Frank, you know, in, also in Texas. And then um, I also, yeah, <laughs> thank my uh, another two uh, collaborators, uh, Yi Chen Rui, uh, Bai Jing, uh, Li Chen Yuan, Hong Fa Bo, Thais Coven Hoven is my collaborator in Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University in Shuzhou. That's where I come from. Cool. And I also found uh, my last two collaborators, uh, Chen Wenping and Zhang Rui Zhu from uh, Central University of Taiwan. And nice. but without their collaboration, I cannot finish this uh, binary evolution. Uh, investigation of all these uh, open clusters. Thank you all for your contributions. Well, that was an awesome shout out. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right. And Chai Yang, thank you so much for walking us through this very awesome AJ article. Thank you. Um, and you mentioned it a couple of times. So let me push yeah. on it a little bit. Um, so, so where do you think we go, let's say over the next couple of years? Are there plans in the work to get spectra of these unresolved binaries, for example? Uh, mm -hmm. Are there other plans to either increase the number of open clusters? Uh, I don't think there's gonna be any major plans to get better proper motions in Gaia for a little bit, uh, but maybe there is, maybe I don't know something. Um, and so just sort of where do, you, where do you think we take this topic over the next, two to five years? Um, my idea, so also, you know, um, based on the current binary uh, work, you can see that in order to get, you know, to infer a very accurate dynamical signature, if we want to disentangle, you know, in the side, outer side, we really need high resolution spectroscopy. Yes. And that is something, you know, actually, I think it's very urgent. The reason is that Gaia have uh, published a uh, very accurate uh, proper motion. Yes. So if we combine with accurate radial velocity, of course, uh, if you notice, Gaia also published radial velocity. But uh, sure. if you use it, you notice that the uncertainty for radial velocity ranging from a few kilometers, no, from a 0.5 or 0.2, okay, lower, uh, the, the minimum may be a few 0.5 or some kilometer per second up to a or even larger kilometer per second. Thanks. And this accuracy, uh, you know, for open cluster in uh, kinematics, unfortunately, is not enough. Right. For the disks, okay, it, right. it sure. will be good, yeah. you know, it's uh, uh, unfortunate for our star cluster uh, group community, we really urgently need high resolution spectroscopy. And that actually is uh, actually what I'm also starting uh, to do. Uh, two years ago, uh, uh, you know, we tried to apply observation from uh, CFHT, Aisha mm -hmm. in Hawaii. And mm -hmm. also this year, we also trying to uh, uh, apply for VLT, you know, high resolution, yeah, yeah. you know, spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, I know, you know, in Europe, they also have a foremost and with, you know, this uh, yes. large spectroscopic survey, high yeah. resolution, but also survey. They also including uh, open clusters. I think that is mm -hmm. a very, um, a very precious data in the coming future. And as you know, you know, it's also, you know, we have a Gaia, uh, the DR4, you know, in the future. Okay. And Problem also yeah. slightly increase a little bit, but yeah. you know, if we have a more high resolution, you know, velocity of a uh, member stars, yeah. that definitely revolutionize the open cluster. The reason is that before, can you imagine you know, in the past, we never discovered tidal tail. 
in open cluster. I was going to say, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, exactly. the tail is completely merged inside the, the few stars. We need accurate, uh, you know, kinematic data. And Gaia provide that, you know, revolutionize that. And now there's other signature in open cluster. For example, in global cluster, we already observe rotation signature. Yes. How about open clusters? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, actually, it's, uh, I have seen some pioneer work, you know, it's before they use it, uh, guy, uh, you know, it's to investigate that, but you know, it's not very significant yet because we really need, need accurate uh, kinematic data. So that is uh, the future, you know, it's, uh, if we have that, we can find our signature, you know, maybe that will be another, you know, uh, error, you know, for the in, in internal kinematics, you know, signature of open clusters with a higher resolution spectrum. Awesome. Well, I really look forward to seeing this field develop over the next couple of years. It'll be very exciting. Very cool. Yes. And actually, we are already running embody simulation for this rotating open clusters. Hopefully, if you come out, you know, it's a shoe. And so, and we, we try to compare, you know, to observation. And yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. There we go. <laughs> I'll, I'll be looking for Tony back there. So very good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Shaying, thank you so much. Very much. I'll do. And that will do everyone. And I hope this made your astronomy day just way better. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.